Right, well here's the bottom end of the latest BSA A65 engine that I've been working on and totally stripped and um, this one came in with reported low oil pressure and although it turned out to be in relatively good condition the oil pump was absolutely worn out on it but I've been right through the lot and um, the crankshaft's been away, it didn't need a regrind but it's been polished and I'm going to build it up with new big end shells um, there's a new time inside main bearing thrust washer the bush was actually in very good shape and the journal so they've been left alone um, and I'm just checking uh, seeing as how I replaced the time inside thrust washer which was a little bit worn there it is I put a new one of those in so I'm just checking for end float or lack of again and um, I've actually got the cases tightly clamped together I've got that nut fitted and done up tightly there and I've got this big clamp there um, leave the crank as usual there you can see I'm pressing there and there's no movement at all on the clock now the recommended end float is one and a half to three thousandths of an inch but I've actually got none there but uh, before we get worried and concerned about that I can still turn the crank freely quite easily so it's not it's not trapped it's not binding it's all spinning quite easily and freely but there's absolutely no discernible end float at all on it when I test for it um, I've also got the gasket faces spotlessly clean and I will be uh, putting some sealing compound on them so that'll have a nominal thickness as well and uh, also when the engines warm up the crankcases expand a little so I know that it's certainly not going to tighten up or anything so I'm not uh, unduly concerned about that so I'm going to rebuild the engine with no end float cold with no gasket compound on the uh, crankcase faces so by the time I've put it together for keeps with some sealant between the cases at the joint there probably will be a very tiny amount of end float on it which uh, will be quite acceptable and I'm quite happy to continue putting the engine together now now that I've seen that just as a sort of footnote to the um, BSA A65 bottom end with no end float at all with its new um, time inside thrust washer fitted I've now fitted the old one temporarily here's the new one and the old one is a little bit worn and very sort of mildly scored on its face thanks to actually the uh, sludge trap uh, blanking plug at the end of the crank not being screwed in far enough before and it was actually spinning round and merrily sort of chewing at the face of the old thrust washer um, but just as a comparison, I've put it in there anyway. Uh, we saw no end float at all before. And now, with the cases clamped and bolted together, just as before with the one nut there and this big clamp, and no gasket compound on the joint faces still, you can actually see that we have two thousandths of an inch end float there which actually falls within the one and a half to three thousandths of an inch allowance quite nicely um, and would be good to go but uh, like I say it, it's very very slightly damaged the old thrust washer so I'm going to fit this new one and go with zero end float like I say by the time I put a little bit of gasket compound on the crankcase joint and when the engines run a bit and certainly when it's warmed up it's not going to tighten up and it's free to turn anyway with the new thrust washer in place so the next thing I'm going to do is split it now and take that old thrust washer out again put the new one in gasket compound around the joint faces and then I'll put it together for keeps and bolt it up and that will be the bottom end ready to go of course uh, before that I'll obviously fit the con rods and the new big end shells um, and then we'll have the bottom end all in one piece ready to add all the little bits and pieces to it and go from there okay I'm just uh, taking one last look at this BSA A65 bottom end now and I've got the crank in 
with conrods fitted and the new big end shells, big end caps all torqued up etc. All the nuts and bolts holding the crankcases together are fitted now and tight so they're not just clamped together um, and I've also got some gasket compound smeared between the cases it's all bolted up tightly as I said and um, where we had no end float detectable before on the clock we've now got just under one thousandth of an inch and I'm very happy with that. It's supposed to be one and a half to three thousandths of an inch. We've got one. And uh, when the crankcase is warm up, that will increase a little anyway. I'd rather have under rather than over any day of the week. So I'm more than happy with that. And it's a Friday afternoon. It's gone five o'clock. So I think that's a good place to be at the end of the week. With the BSA A65 engine with a crank float of less than one thousandth of an inch so that means that next week I can carry on with that and uh, build up the rest of the engine fit the pistons barrels heads and uh, build up all the rest of it and fairly soon it'll be ready to go home and carry on with its life in the owner's bike so that's where I am I'm at at the end of this week and that's not in a bad place to be